teaching at Marlboro Elementary School. So you want to keep it on the M over here. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> it's uh, December 15th, and we are doing a lesson about legends here at Marlboro Elementary. What I asked, first of all, was what countries your ancestors come from. We know that the United States, there were people living here long before it was called the United States. When Columbus discovered this place, it was completely by mistake. It was an accident. He was looking for a shorter route to the West Indies for the spice trade. And he bumped into this land map and he said, ho, ho, I found it. And he was completely wrong. And there were people living here that met him when he arrived. Does anybody know who those people were? The Indians? He called them Indians because he thought he was going to the West Indies. Yeah, the Indians. We call them something else now, though. Native Americans. Native Americans, that's right. And it's not just one group of people. It's 500 different nations of people. And they lived here originally for thousands of years. And then other people started coming in. Other people started coming in from all over the world. Here are some of the major groups that are represented at Marlboro Elementary. Are you ready? Raise your hand if you are have German heritage. Someone that you know has me too. I raise my hand up in the air. All right. And we call them Pennsylvania Dutch. And it's not Holland, D-U-T-C-H. No, no. It was Deutsch, and it got kind of changed into Dutch. Anybody from Ireland? Do I have any Irish Irish friends here? My other hand goes up because I'm half Irish and I'm half German. Oh, lots of people in this classroom. Wow, that's amazing. Put your hands down. Where are my Italian friends? Italian heritage. Polish. That's the other big group. Anybody with Native American anywhere in the Let's go up, hands down. Anybody with Russian? Anybody with Puerto Rican, Dominican Republic, Mexican heritage? Any others that I have not mentioned? Any other countries? Any other countries that you, that your relatives came from? I know there's a lot more countries. What other countries? Um, Scotland. Scotland, fantastic. Norway. Norway. Sweden. Sweden. France. France. Israel. Israel, fantastic. Someone else on the other class, too. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about some of the legends that come from these different countries, some of these interesting characters, and then you, my friends, are going to write your very own story. You are going to choose one of the characters, and then in your story you're going to describe that character, what it looks like, what it sounds like, what it smells like, what it does, and then you're going to meet the character and any. So we are going to start with the Native Americans, because they were here first. So Native Americans have a really cool creature, and it's called the Uctena. The Uctena was a horned serpent, and the Uctena, it was said, was incredibly dangerous. It had two horns on its head, and it was a long serpent-type creature. And it had seven spots running down its back. Its breath was so putrid, so horrible, it smelled like 500 cloves of garlic smashed up, mixed with rotten eggs. And one whiff of that breath, my friends, what do you think would happen to you? You die. Exactly. You would die on the spot. And this serpent was very dangerous. The only way to protect yourself from it was if you were lucky enough to shoot an arrow, or maybe you used a slingshot with a rock, and shoot it in the seventh spot, and it would fall over dead. That was your only defense. The other thing about this creature, it had a blinding light that emitted from its eyes. And this light, if you saw it, it would practically blind you. And you would become very confused. And rather than running away from the Uctena, you would run directly toward it. A very scary creature indeed. There's another one. The underwater panther. What's a panther? Oh, I love cats. Oh, should I go up and pet it? No. No, why? No. Why? 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 Because it's a wild animal. It's a wild animal. <laughs> oh, I like wild animals. Really, I can't go up and pet it. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. Tell me about that. Yes. Um, because it has big teeth and it eats other things. It's, it it's got big teeth and it has claws. Okay, I wouldn't want to go up to that head. So it's a big wild cat, right? The underwater panther. The underwater panther was a combination of animals. It had horns like a deer. It had feathers. If it's underwater, what other feature do you think it might have? Fish. Scales. Scales, exactly. It had scales like a fish. And I, I apologize about my writing on this board. I'm still, I'm still learning. In fact, let me erase that. That's terrible. All right. Miss Scott has trouble with it. You have to put the eraser down. She doesn't like it. 
Thank you, my friends, my technologically advanced pupils. Yes. And it also, it had the feathers and the scales, the deer and the horns. It had a face of a cat and the tail of a cat, yes. It might have had webbed paws, yeah, to help it swim better. The thing that's really cool about the underwater panther is this one was not dangerous. This one is a protector. Not all legends are bad. They're not all scary. This one was a protector. So if something bad was happening, the underwater panther might show up to help you out. This was a very powerful creature, one of the most powerful in Native American lore. And I want you to think for a minute. These two creatures, they're very unusual. The horned serpent here. If you were a Native American living thousands of years ago, and one day you dug a very deep hole, very, very deep, hundreds of feet deep, what might you have found in that very deep hole? Yeah. In that very deep hole. And you wanted to explain what you found, so you created these two creatures. You found something in that hole. What do you think you might have found, and then you told these stories to explain it? Maybe like deer horns or something? Even older than deer horns. You might find deer horns, but older than deer horns. There's your clue. Old, very, very old, if you dug very deep in the ground. A skull. <coughs> An old skull. The skull from what? A dinosaur. Exactly. One of the theories about these two stories is that these myths were created to explain dinosaur fossils that were found. And so they created stories. We always create stories to explain the world around us. All right, where are my Irish friends? Where are my Irish? There you are. When you think of Ireland, my friends, and you think of stories, what do you think of? Ooh, leprechaun. It's what the first you? thing everybody says, leprechaun. Yes, what else might you think, think of? Loch Ness Monster. That's actually Scottish, but people think of it when they think of Ireland as well. What else might you think of? Four leaf clovers, yes. Potatoes, yes. But this is a legend, my friends. Has anyone ever heard the legend of Sleepy Hollow? Yes. 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 It may have actually originated from an Irish story. In Ireland, so this is Irish, there is the Dolahan. The Dolahan, what is the major creepy character in the Sleepy Hollow, in Legend of Sleepy Hollow? What's the main really creepy character? Horseman, the headless horseman, that's right. The Dolahan is a headless horseman. And he carries his head in his right hand, raised up above his head. And the eyes emit a bright light. That might be where the whole idea of the jack-o'-lantern and the pumpkin came from. He also has a hideous, grotesque, twisted grin on his face. He rides a black horse. They say if the horse is attached to a carriage, they run so fast that flames shoot out from the carriage wheels. And he appears at a certain time. Does anybody have a guess when he appears? When would he appear? Tell me, tell me. When does he appear? Midnight, perhaps. Let me give you a clue. Grim Reaper. When do you see the Grim Reaper? I hope nobody sees it. When do you see the Grim Reaper? Mm, not looking for a specific, you might see him on Halloween, but I'm thinking about an event that might happen and the Grim Reaper shows up. Um, die. Someone's going to die. The headless horseman warned people of death. He never killed anybody himself, but people did not want to see the Dolahan, because if the Dolahan was coming, what was going to happen? Was Someone was going to die. So remember, he's got a grotesque, distorted face, it's misformed, malformed with his head up in his hand, which I can imagine if you saw that, you'd have some sort of reaction, right? Yeah, I think so, I think. And in your stories, in your stories, my friends, when we write the stories where you're meeting these characters, your descriptions, rather than saying, I was scared, ho-hum. No, my legs were quaking so that I could barely stand. My heart was pounding. I felt like it was going to leap right out of my chest. My hands were shaking. Sweat was pouring out of my body. My eyes were as big as saucers. I could barely breathe, let alone scream. I was terrified. That's a lot more interesting than, I was scared. <laughs> Want to paint a picture with words.